already know just where I be, dog. I ain't being cocky, but Philly, what I'm rapping, watch me check it like it's hockey. I ain't tryna get it twisted. If you get it, then you got me. If you with it, cool. If not, I'll treat you like a Tamagotchi. I'ma let you down, point. Yeah, I never disappoint. What's going on, guys? Jay Hoyt back with you today. Welcome back to the franchise mode, the Seattle Attack. So if you guys remember the last two, technically three episodes, we had the expansion draft where we took our players from every other team. We had the entry level draft. We made a couple, actually a bunch of trades. We went to free agency, signed a bunch of guys, and now we are at the first ever preseason game so i'm sorry for not uploading this past weekend my brother came home like i mentioned in a couple of the videos and you know want to spend time with him obviously and you know had some other stuff going on but either way we are back here today on the franchise mode we've simulated all the way up to the first day of free or not free agency holy crap i'm already misspeaking but the first day of the preseason and let's catch you up to speed. You guys saw the expansion draft. If you haven't seen anything from before this point, make sure you go do so or else you're not going to know what's going on. So let's give you guys a little backstory here. So what I did in between episodes was you guys saw in the last one. Maybe you didn't. I don't remember if I left it in or not. But the owner said he wanted us to upgrade the team store. I have went ahead and did that. Well, it's still in progress, but it should be ready by the regular season. Same thing with the parking lot. I upgraded it one level. And then eventually once we probably next year, maybe the year after, once we get a little bit more money and uh, increase our budget a little bit, once we don't have to upgrade stuff anymore, we'll purchase a second parking lot, upgrade to tier five, and then we won't really have an issue there. Other than that, we obviously have a couple of upgrades with concessions and the club seats, but that can only be done in the off season. So I'm probably gonna wait till next off season to do that. But then we have, you know, all these, the bathrooms for what, I don't understand why this always happens. The seats, the lower bowl, the upper bowl, the club seats, the parking lot, the team store, and the concessions all start at like 100 or 99, I guess we'll call it. But then why do the bathrooms start at 55? I will never get that. But we have that. And as far as these, this stuff goes, the upgrading and maintaining of our, you know, our building, our, I think it's called the Seattle Megadome, I think I saw. I'm probably just going to wait till it gets down to about 20% or so and then up, you know, or repaired or upgraded or whatever, whatever it is. I did the store. I did the parking lot. Other than that, we did actually sign two more guys. Now, the only reason I didn't put it in was it wasn't really that important. So these are not our lines. So I don't think they are immediately. But we did sign Droma Ginla to a ridiculous $8.5 million contract only because we needed to get closer to the salary cap. So we are at like $10 million or so instead of like 30. So you guys also remember that we had drafted Ryan Miller in the expansion draft and we didn't and we went into the offseason we did not re-sign him. However, he is on our team again. So, the only reason I have him again just like Drum Ginla is because of salary. So, let's go back, show you the goaltenders here and show you that uh, Ryan Miller is there. So, he is going to be playing, actually he's not going to be playing at all. He's going to be in the AHL He's only there for salary. We're at 13.9, so just under 14 mil. We have Neuver and Corpusello, and then we have Subban, Dreger, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that guy's name in the AHL. So what I did already is kind of did roster moves. However, what I was noticing a lot is let me go show you the lines one more time and show you. Well, actually, let's first do the lines, and then I'll show you what we're planning on doing this upcoming episode. So... I already kind of have it mapped out in my brain, but you guys kind of notice one thing when you look at my team. We have a good first line right here. We have a decent second line. But we don't really have many good scoring depth on our bottom six, or I should say bottom seven, I guess, with right wing there. So what I was planning on doing was moving Justin Williams down, right? Moving Brown, not there, but eventually is doing something like that. So that way we have Grabner on our first line that provides the speed with Peugeot in the middle and Perron as a right wing. Now Perron, obviously we got in the free or not free agency, we got in a trade. But then we also have Justin Williams. So with this, I figured we'd have that solid top six, even though our second line is old as crap besides Zeno. We have a good solid top six here. 
Then on our bottom six, we have more, I don't want to say defensive guys, but we have more guys that are more defensive minded, more of the power forward, two way forward type players to where we have a distinction between our top six and bottom six. So that way we don't have, you know, mixed roles where, you know, we're just mixing everybody in everywhere. So I actually already did the, all the special teams lines. They're really not that fun or exciting. They're just basically until we get better players. They're just both of our defensemen at you know the four or at the defensive positions, and then you know it just goes on from there. So with this lineup, I like it a lot. However, I think we're gonna make more trades. So I did already kind of plan this out on my phone, not really on my phone. I took a picture of what a potential trade could look like, and we are actually going to revisit free agency. In the sense that there is still a player that is a restricted free agent from the Boston Bruins. Now, you guys probably already know what I'm talking about, but they still have Ryan Spooner as a restricted free agent. They have not re-signed him. So what I figured is if we can get Ryan Spooner for a couple of guys that don't really fit into our team right now. And let me just look at it real quick. So we got left wing. So we got Matt Nieto who's down here. The only reason I'm g trying to get rid of Nieto is simply for the fact that our left wings, although our only really old one that's going to be moving on probably after this year is Kunitz, but Nieto just is kind of in that spot where his overall is too good for the AHL, but not good enough for the NHL. And it's just kind of in that weird zone. Plus, we already have DiGiuseppe, who I'm trying to develop, and we have Burmistrov. So, Burmistrov is going to be one of those first call-ups. Then we have... DiGiuseppe, and then we have a couple other guys in the AHL. So Nato kind of is the the outsider there to where I don't really want him to stay here. Plus, he has some better than nothing trade value. However, obviously, this is not going to be the only thing in the trade. Just like Nieto, we have another player down here, JT Brown. Again, we got him in the, I think, the expansion draft. And he doesn't really fit into our team right now. Although we have two older guys in Williamson and Ginla. As free agency next year and the year after comes through trades and prospects, he's already at the age where he's peaked already and he's not going to get really any better. He's not going to get better than 80 overall. And even though that would take over a couple of positions up here, Smith Pelly and Brown are both young enough to where they can still grow. And then, you know, we have other guys to replace him. So JT Brown also going to be going in this trade along with a defenseman. Now this is going to be kind of like a odd man out you know, situation where we're going to make a trade. But the last guy is actually Xavier Olette. Now, I thought long about this one of if I wanted to get rid of Olette or not. But if you look at our left-handed defenseman right now, who are they? A Alex Martinez, who's 30 years old, probably going to have him for a few more years minimum, right? Then we have a couple right-handed defensemen. Brodeen, we're probably going to have for the rest of his career unless he starts sucking. And then we have Edmondson, who's just better than... Olet and he's already up there and then we look down farther where we have Pouli out we have this Olaf Olafson we have you know, we just have other guys that are going to beat him out sooner rather than later and he doesn't really fit right now so if we can get something like a Ryan Spooner in the trade then that will definitely help us out however the only other thing I really want back from the Boston Bruins is actually a defensive prospect down here I think his name is Rob if I'm not mistaken, Rob O'Gara, Rod or something. Rob, so I was right, Rob O'Gara. So just a prospect defenseman that could play in the AHL. Nothing really more behind that than what you look at now. But let's see if this goes through. I actually have not seen it. So they, okay. So they don't want JT Brown. So uh, that was a big part of it. Okay, so I'll have to rework this trade draft pick. So do we have anything extra for this year? So we have Vegas's and ours so let's go down to i think it's 2020 is the year after this one to where we already have a bunch of picks we don't have a first round pick but we have two thirds so if we get rid of our third round pick in this one that looks a little bit more balanced so we get it's a two for two basically and then we're gonna have to sign spooner and he's gonna have to obviously accept but uh um, you know that's a good trade we get another center slash winger that we desperately needed that could play center or wing and that's a trade that we really, really want. So will this go through? Yes. So Ryan Spooner, welcome to Seattle. So we're going to have to actually sign him. 
before we actually put him in our team but so ryan spooner all he wants he's listed as a second liner which is interesting but he wants only a two a two million dollar deal and then if he wants more i'm guessing it goes up from there so if we send him to a one year deal maybe a two year deal it will help us with the cap as well but let's go with like a 2.85 type situation for two years that way we get him up to 27 maybe 28 years old and you know it puts us to where we want it let's get right through the preseason here hopefully spooner signs we can get him in the lineup and you know take whoever else out so as you guys can tell i don't think i showed you that our ahl team is the uh, the portland storm i think they're called but uh, owner goals evaluated obviously there we go second one promotion nights i thought i already did that but i guess we'll just hit auto on that well maybe we'll do that eventually but not really that important right now and injuries are still on so we got to make sure those are off so there we go ryan spooner signs right away which is awesome so we'll get him in the lineup and get right to the first ever game with the vegas golden knights so it is also good because the expansion draft and the entry level draft in the off season, those are always going to be our longest videos and they're the most painful to go through because even though I record for about four, I recorded for about 40 minutes for, or no, I recorded for about 50 minutes for the first expansion draft. I ended up cutting in half and making it two videos. And then the second one, the off season and the entry level draft, I recorded for 40 minutes. So hopefully I can record for less than like 25 minutes and you know, we can move on and I don't have to take so long to edit these and you know, move on with the shorter edits and be happy with it. So the draft, the draft class in general field a good year. Well, that's good because I think it's a Dolan and Shvechnikov and you know, that draft. So the first ever game with the Vegas Golden Knights. So we're going to play it. However, we're not going to play it completely. We're just going to show you a little bit of the game and show you guys the jerseys and, you know, show us around the arena. So it is home, correct? I want to make sure that's correct. So on your screen, you guys can see the our new team's jerseys. We do not have a captain this year. I should mention that. We have three assistant captains. But uh, I went for the gold or black, gold, and white, even though it's similar to Vegas. But you know what? I like these colors better. I, I had a plan going in that were those colors. So I do like that a lot. Is it going to be that in real life? Probably not because it is very close to Vegas, Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't think it's close to Nashville. But either way, you guys can see the uniforms. You know, we got the simple swords in the front. We got, you know, the stripes all over the place. We got just good looking jerseys. So I think I can actually uh, show you. Did it my game freeze? So we are back. I don't know what happened. My game ended up freezing for some reason where I couldn't do anything. But welcome back, I guess. It was only a couple seconds for you. But it was about five minutes for me, which actually sucked. But anyway, as I was saying, look at the jerseys here. Here is our home jersey. And I was about to show you the away jersey, which is basically the same thing. Just simple white. And then we also have an alternate jersey, which is down here, which is just yellow. Got the stripes on it. For whatever reason, that's the uh, the white stripe in the middle that looks a little weird. But either way, those are alternate jerseys. I might end up changing those. I think I can anyway. But um, as I was saying, we don't have a captain this year. We have three assistants. We have David Perron, uh, Alex Martinez, and Kevin Chattenkirk, I believe, as our three cap assistant captains this year. But anyway, let's get right into it. Show you guys the opener the and everything that happens on. So I'm going to eventually end up shutting up once this starts. And I'm not playing it. I'm just going to show you the intro, show you guys the arena and the pre-game effects that we have in place. So I'm super excited. Welcome to the Seattle Megadome. Good evening, everyone. With Eddie Olchek and Ray Ferraro, I'm Mike Emery. The annual pilgrimage to the playoffs. Every October it starts, and this one tonight between Seattle and Vegas. And let's head down to ice level. Here's Ray Ferraro. This might be the best this expansion team feels about itself for the next seven months. They're undefeated. They haven't gone through the rigors of a long losing streak. And there'll be some of those. I played on an expansion team, guys. and it's So as you saw, this is the Seattle Megadome. And welcome to Seattle. So I'm not going to cast it. My, my goal was to have my brother cast the first ever game because that's what he's trying to do. But unfortunately, we we're not able to do that. Let's just watch a little bit of the first period. I might show the highlights and watch the entire game. Not 100% sure yet, but we're rocking the black jerseys. Hopefully we're going to do something here. We got our first line out there right now. Can we get something going? We would have had a great goal. All right, Edmondson, step up on him. 
No. No. No! So who was that? I think that was Jason Garrison just rips it home for Vegas. So can I skip these replays? I can't. There's our mascot as well. I forget what his name is, but there's our mascot. All right, they get it up to Howla. Goes through the legs, dipsy dangle in it. To Merrill, to back to Howla. Oh, the one-timer to, who was that? Number 28, Riley, I think that's Riley Smith, maybe. The first line, we got the second line. We win the faceoff, though. Hit by Edmondson. Uh-oh, Neil to the net. Tries to shoot a short side, doesn't work. Edmondson kicks it in and onto the goalie and scores an own goal. Chase on. On the forecheck. Gets the puck. Goes into the corner. Pass it to the front. Marcheseau with the fourth goal in the game. So not very good. Looking at Seattle's regular season home opener. So 4 nothing. Marcheseau. Extends the lead, goes into the corner, chase on, beautiful pass through two defensemen to Marcia. So throws a short side on Neuver. Will we see a goaltending change? I'm not exactly sure because it is simulation. So, yep, that's the day for Neuver. Not an impressive debut for the Seattle Golden. Not Seattle. Wow. Not an impressive debut for Michael Neuver. Corpusello takes over in goal. Can that change what's going on? Spooner takes it off. Justin Williams takes over. Breaking over the red line. The blue line. Can he get some? Spooner shoots. Blocked by Garrison. Into the corner for Neal. Gets crushed by Williams. Goal. Go in. Yes. The guy we just traded for, Ryan Spooner. Now, obviously, you know, we didn't expect him to score our first ever goal. But James Neal gets crushed by Williams, leading to the opportunity where Spooner was able to take the first ever goal in Seattle attack history. Williams, the guy that made the play happen. Gets the puck to the trainer. Let's watch it again. Williams over to Spooner. Gets it underneath the goaltender. Goes through him. Eventually ends up scoring. What a great goal by Spooner. Must be a great time. So we fall in the first ever game in Seattle Attack history. But we're not going to just end it with one game played. We're obviously going to do some more here. So let's go through. Let's go to December 1st. That way we get a good sense of how the season's going to go. Ryan Spooner, first ever goal in Seattle attack history. So see, uh, simulate up to that date. Yes, that's what we want to do. So we regain right after that. We get our first ever win away in the Islanders arena. And then we win against LA. So if one, some players want to meet with you, that's great. I don't really care. So, okay. We have a trade uh, to look at. So... Detroit wants to trade us uh, Nyquist and Ablicator for Williams and a fourth round pick. So now, immediately, if you guys saw Mr. Ablicator's contract, six years at $4.25 million, not interested at all. So Nyquist, I would love to have him on the team, would be a great addition, is actually doing very well so far. Eight points in three games? Sheesh. But I am not looking to trade away Martinez at this time. So we are going to decline that trade. I probably should have done the trade block as well. But since we lost against Vegas in a horrible fashion, we have won every single game since then. Until I jinxed it versus New Jersey and Tampa Bay. So... We had a pretty good start so far, 6-3. and three. Our AHL team is doing well. They're starting off 7-2 and two themselves, so we're right around even there. 6-4 and four for Seattle. Now 9-3 and three for Portland. Okay, so we got scouting. Let's do this. Let's go six weeks to, I think we, yeah. So let's do six weeks, or no, we'll do five weeks to the OHL forwards and move on with the season. So 8-5. and five. So we're still going positive. We're winning more than we're losing. So that's definitely good. Our HL team is definitely doing better than I expected. We're on a five or a four-game losing streak currently. So that's not good. Five-game losing streak. Six-game losing streak. 
Okay, so we broke it up in Chicago. We can't go on six-game losing streaks. That's not what we need. Because if our AHL team is doing that well, then, like, we might have to start calling people up that deserve it or something. Because we're just not playing well currently. So 11-12. and 12. Hopefully we can just tie it up here. 12-12 12 and 12 versus Toronto. Can we? No, we can't. So going into the first two months... Entering December, we are 11 and 13. Not the best. We're going to go check stats here in a second. But Portland, impressing. 16 and 8. So that's definitely good to see they're doing well. Obviously, they have a lot of good guys as well. But look who is leading the way for Seattle. Mr. Ryan freaking Spooner. So we might have to move him up to the first line if he's doing that well. So let's just look at, you know, some of the guys here that are maybe not producing as much as they should be. So Spooner on our second line. Dino on our second line. Williams on our second line. Why is our second line doing significantly better than our first line? So we might just swap everyone on our second line with everyone on the first line. So Grabner's on our first line. He's up there on points, but not doing very well. Pajot's not doing as well as I thought he was going to do. And who, is he, who are they playing with? Perron. Not per, even though he did really, really well in that first game, he had a lot of opportunities. Minus four, only six points. Not doing well at all. So it looks like we're going to have to make some line changes here. And we'll probably come into the next episode with that. But let's go to defense. Check how everyone's doing there. Shattenkirk leading the way. Vatten leading the way as well. So it looks like they're also performing on the power play, which is good. Martinez and Brodine are our top pair there. Well, not our top pair, but our top two left or left defense there. And this is the stat I'm most interested in, our goaltenders. So it doesn't look like Corpus Salo is doing nearly enough, you know, to save it off. Because Norvair, 9 and 10, not terrible. But Corpus Salo, we're going to need some more from you, bud. 3.35. Oh my goodness, that kind of frustrates me a little bit. So it does look like Corpus Cell also has an assist. So we're not going to make any crazy trades, you know, now. But we are going to probably make some line changes. Because if our second line is performing this well, they're obviously doing something right. So either we split up the second line and, you know, mix them throughout our first line. Or we just move everyone from the second line to the first. So... I'm going to see what, you know, I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit more and see why we're not doing as well. And we'll come into the fourth ever episode of the Seattle Attack Franchise Mode and see what happens. But as for right now, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. We went through the first couple of months of the season. Not the start we really wanted there. But let's go see if we can fix it, you know, off camera here. Try to fix it for the team and see what happens after that. But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you did enjoy, hit that like button down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, we'll see you next time. I want you forever. Ain't no way we're not together. Scars on my body so I can take you wherever. Like, I want you forever. Even when we're not together. Scars on my body. I can look at you and never.